Hey guys, what is up? We are here with a little bit of code. And by code, I mean learning how to code well. And what do I mean by learning how to code well? I see so many tutorials, so many beginner's guides to, oh, hey, this is how you create a Minecraft plugin, or this is how you code a, a basic game. And that, that's totally fine. Like, I get it. That's fine. But what I wanted to do was something a little bit different. I wanted to teach you how to code well. Um, I want to teach you a couple of design patterns that will enhance what you do. I wanted to teach you things that will allow you to create programs, code, plugins, whatever you want. Um, this is applicable to everything. Um, I want you to be able to do those in such a way that you don't get lost or confused when you look at them later or that you not write spaghetti code. So there's a few design patterns that are out there. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you uh, one per kind of video thing, right? Um, what I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to show you the service locator pattern. Now, what do I mean by a service locator? Well, I see a lot of tutorials, and again, I'm gonna pick on Minecraft plugins here because, well, that just seems to be the, the thing, right? I see a lot of tutorials out there that say, okay, well, what you want is you want to create a main class, um, like a main kind of, area that your code starts in. The main class is the main the main place that your code starts in. They say, okay, um, what I want to do is I want to create some, you know, uh, public static, um, let's see, uh, troll commands plus plus. So we're going to um, create a uh, static version of this class and what I mean by static is I mean it's accessible from anywhere and then we'll call it main equals null and then in here we will set main equals this now what this does is it basically says okay um, what I want to do is I want to create um, I want to take this class and make it accessible everywhere throughout the code base now this is a really bad idea <laughs> And the reason behind this is because this leads to spaghetti code. What I mean is when you end up uh, making a plugin like this and you want you know, to uh, reference the main plugin, well, what happens is you'll end up with every class referencing this through some, at some point. That is bad. So what do we want to do to fix this? And um, with this, by the way, the service locator pattern has more than just, oh, I want to fix my spaghetti code. No, no, no. It can do a few different things. Now, another thing I wanted to show you with this, with the service locator pattern, it wasn't just, you know, fixing my spaghetti code. It's also um, what happens when I have like multiple, let's say I, I want to support multiple base plugins. Okay, for example, uh, in my plugin troll commands, right, uh, I support multiple disguise plugins, right? This is an optional thing that you can include with troll commands that allows you to use either I disguise or libs disguises. Now, the question is, how do you do that, right? Well, service locator pattern. Now, what I mean is down here, I say, you know, if the libs disguise plugin is included. If the server has um, the libs disguises plugin loaded, then what we do is we provide a disguise service. And I'll get to that in a second, don't worry. Um, what we're doing is we're providing a disguise service um, called the libs disguises service. Uh, otherwise, um, if the I disguise plugin is loaded, we're providing the disguise I disguise. Uh, disguise service. It's really difficult to keep that uh, in my head without tongue twisting it. Otherwise, uh, we provide a null service. So what is a service? Define a service. Well, a service is anything that um, can be accessed throughout the code base. In your code so somewhere in a game, you'll have, you'll have to play audio at some point, either sound effect or music or whatever else. You'll provide the audio engine itself, the whole thing, as a service through uh, for the entire code base to use. So let's get into act some, some actual code just to, just for a minute here and I'll kind of explain what happens um, in kind of layman's terms without digging into the code so much but you can for the more, more advanced people you can kind of see what's going on here. So we have uh, basically just a map of services. So what I want to do is I want to provide a service and then I want to be able to get that provided service later. 
So, okay. Well, right here we have a couple of functions called provide service, and all these do is we say, you know, what service would you like to provide? In this case, it's the libs disguises helper class, right? Um, so I have, let's say for example, that libs disguises is loaded. That's fine. So what we do is we provide the libs disguises helper class. Um, and what that does is that goes in here and that puts in this registry and says, okay, um, the, we want to, you know, add the libs disguises helper um, as a provided service. So that's fine, right? And then later on, when we get um, the, when we go in and we say, okay, I want that disguise helper class, it'll pull it up and say, okay, here it is, and you can have it. Here it is, right there. So we say later on in the code, we say get service, and we say, okay, I'd like that, sir, I would like that disguise helper service now, in order to help me, you know, disguise a person as a tree or something, I don't know, or a, or a duck, right? So, okay, that's fine. So we'll get that and we'll have that service. Now, the question to, you know, how do I provide multiple services is here. We have a common interface. So what we do is we have a libs disguises helper, which uses libs disguises itself as the API. This is all just a wrapper around this little API here, right? So all of this is just a wrapper. You know, we disguise as a player, we disguise, um, uh, we have a couple of options. Options. We just can disguise as a regular entity, or we can undisguise, or you know, get their type, or say, are they disguised, right? Or is it a valid library? So all of these are just kind of helper functions that allow us to disguise or undisguise a person. What we do is we use the interface here as our get, and I'll show you again what I mean in a second. So don't worry. I'll explain things as we go. Um, and then here we're using. I disguise the actual I disguise API as our kind of base here, but it's all the same code as you can see. You can you can see it all uses the same interface, and it's all the same function names: disguise this player, disguise this player, entity, entity, undisguise, disguise type is disguise and valid library. You can see here again that we have all of the same functions returning all of the same things, and once again, even with the null, all of the same functions returning all of the same things, except it's just not doing anything instead. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, this means that when I decide I'm going to provide the libs disguises helper, null disguise helper, or disguise helper, when I provide any one of those three, it will give me a common interface to interact with any of them without knowing what they are. I'll, and I'll show you again what I mean in a second. So let's say we provide the libs disguises helper. So later on, I have, let's say, the duck command, uh, slash troll duck, right? So what this does is this turns the player into a duck. It's just, trust me, it's quite hilarious. Um, so what you do, or uh, I guess a chicken in this case, whatever. So what you do is say you provided the libs disguise helper. Well, you know for a fact, and we've seen this, that the libs disguise helper implements the I disguise helper interface. So what we can do is we can go into the service locator and get any I disguise helper interface. That's where the magic happens. We say, okay, I want the disguise helper. I want any of the interfaces that you provided, whether it's the I disguise, libs disguises, or the null disguise helper, the you know fake one that's just there to be there uh, to provide a you know something, right? I want any of those interfaces. It doesn't matter what it is. I just want that. So what we're doing is we're actually accessing these functions, but we're accessing whatever's behind these functions, whatever happens to be here as you know the actual backend. But we don't know what we're doing. All we know is that these functions exist. That's all we know. So when I go into here in the disguise helper, the service locator is smart enough to know that I disguise helper is actually any one of these three loaded. The libs disguise is a disguise helper and the null disguise helper. It it does some magic on the back end that basically says hey, I know that all of these three implement this interface, or I know that whatever was loaded, you know, the libs disguises disguise or null disguise, I know whatever was loaded implements this interface, and they want this interface, so we're gonna provide whatever we have that matches this. So when I get this, let's say again libs disguises was loaded, when I get this, it'll have libs disguises at the, as the backend, but we don't know that, all we know is that these functions exist. And I can call 
you know, is it, um, I can go down here and call, you know, is it a valid library, blah, 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 right? And then I can go disguise, you know, or undisguise. And no matter what was loaded, it'll use whatever was on the back end. That is the beauty and the magic of the service locator pattern. Now you can do this with anything. You can do this with, let's say again, a sound engine. Okay, let's say I want a, um, a sound interface, right? And I want just a regular sound engine that plays sounds. Doesn't do anything extra, doesn't do anything special, it just plays, you know, sounds and music. Okay, fine, fair enough. I'll make a sound engine that does that. And I'll have it implement the sound engine interface, right? And now I want a sound engine that logs everything to a file in case I need to debug something, right? In case I need, you know, more information or logs everything to the output of the console, right? But I don't want to put that in the main code. So what I do is I make another sound engine like the first one, but also logs everything to a file or the console or wherever else you want, right? And then I'll have that one also implement the sound interface. But when I go ahead and I load the sound engine in, I'll simply swap the regular engine for the new engine. And since everything's implementing the same interface, this one here, let's say, except, you know, play sound, you know, pause sound, whatever else, it'll simply use the new engine. Or if I don't want any sound at all, but let's say, again, I'm developing a game and I want no sound because I'm a programmer and I'm sick of hearing all the fucking music. Trust me, I've done that many times. I will simply have a null uh, audio engine interface that simply just does nothing. And all I have to do to make it ready for production is swap out the null for the regular and boom, it's literally one line of code and it's done, like I've done here. Instead of providing the regular sound engine, I provide the null sound engine and boom, it's done. It is so beautiful. The the Service locator pattern is so helpful and so beautiful, and it works so, so well if you can just get it working. Now I have in my IGA to you library, my regular just everyday library for everything, I have a pattern, the service locator pattern right here. So if you want, you can either copy the code here or you can make your own, whatever else, or you can simply use my library by just using the Maven repository in the description below. And you can go ahead and have the service locator pattern for yourself. This one is actually very fast, very efficient, has a cache, um, a lookup cache for you know making things a little faster when you're doing multiple lookups. But again, it's entirely up to you how you want to make it, how you want to use it. Otherwise, all it does is say, hey, I'm going to provide this class. This class extends an interface, and I'm going to get the interface, not the class itself. So whatever class happens to be attached to that interface is what I'm getting, but I don't know what that is later on in the code. It is so, so elegant. It is the solution to basically making a static graveyard, which is but basically a bunch of pri uh, public statics everywhere. Um, it's a solution to making a uh, singleton, which is what you see a lot when you see a public static, uh, let's say, you know, um, troll commands plus plus uh, and then get uh, instance. You'll see that a lot actually, you know, uh, return this. It's a more elegant solution to even that because you'll see that a lot. Uh, I believe the I disguise has that. Yeah, no. Oh yes, even uh, libs disguises actually uses that. On the back end, it actually uses the uh, singleton instance um, to reference itself, which again, I'm not a huge fan of. I honestly prefer using the service locator for that. Okay, um, in this instance, I actually have a registry um, that is the actual initialization registry. Now, what this means is it's just kind of a, a I would say, I would call it a graveyard, sort of. Uh, I have a registry and that's basically all that is, is it's it's a graveyard um, of variables, right? I have a place where I keep a whole bunch of ver different variables. And it's basically, just think of it as a box and it has a whole bunch of variables inside it. That's it, that's pretty much it. And so what I want is I want, later on I want to get the game version. Well, instead of calculating the game version every single time, all I do is I do it once, I strip out the in extra information that's not needed, and I put it in here instead in the uh, registry. In this instance, I actually have, um, in the service locator itself, I have the plugin. So if I ever want to get the plugin, 
all I have to do is call the service locator and get the plugin service or the initialization registry service and then the plugin inside there. But either way, I can get the game version, the plugin, plugin version, the logger, everything else, like a whole bunch of useful information that's kind of useful for throughout the entire program. I get it here in the, uh, in the actual service locator pattern. So instead of creating a singleton instance or instead of creating you know, a static graveyard that I just have a static function up here that all the code's tied into, I have it in a service instead. It helps so much. So that's all I wanted to really do for the first episode of this. Um, I just kind of wanted to show off the service locator pattern. I want to show off a bunch of them, the registry, the object pool. Uh, I want to sh show off a whole bunch of really cool stuff that you can do. The command pattern is super, super useful. Um, but I want to show off a bunch of really cool things that you can do that you can add into your program that are just exceptionally uh, intelligent, um, that make your code much better and make your life as a, as a programmer much better. Instead of writing all this spaghetti code that gets out of hand really quickly, you end up writing this elegant code that's just beautiful and awesome everywhere. Um, and I wanted to show you guys that because there's not there's not a lot of programming tutorials out there that are just how to code well. It's always how to code, how to make this, how to make that, how to do basic stuff, but it's never how to code well. So I wanted to show you guys this. I wanted to, you know, kind of get you in the loop of what all of the, you know, people in the AAA studios are doing, what all the people who are the master, you know, the master programmers that you see that are using all of this stuff, this is what they're doing. This is all of the cool stuff that they have kind of hidden away and it's not even hidden. It's just nobody really asks because nobody really thinks about it, you know? So what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of bring that world over to you. I wanted to show you what kind of cool and exciting and interesting things are actually a part of this new, you know, bigger programming world. And they've been around for so many years, but nobody really knows about. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if I see more of that. Of course, I'll do more of this. And as always, I'll see you next time.